Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you haven't guessed by now, we got ourselves here a 2021 Polaris Razor XP 1000 Turbo. Yes, you read it right. It's got the turbo right there. It's a very capable machine and it's me and Sassy's first ever off-road car. So why do we pick a turbo? Well, we'll get to that in a little while, but I just wanted to show you a quick walk around of this beauty before we go any further. Just want to let you guys know we chose a two-seater because our toy hauler, although it does have a garage that would fit a four-seater, uh, we chose a two-seater because it's just a little too tight and we wanted a little bit more storage room. Plus, most of the time, it's just going to be me and Sassy tearing up the trails. So that's why we chose a two-seater. And occasionally, obviously, we got an extra seat when we want to take somebody for a joyride. Now, there's some other obvious reasons why we chose the Razor XP1000 with the turbo, and that's the engine. In 2021, they uh, made some excellent changes, as well as the suspension and drivetrain. It's beefier than the non-turbo models, uh, and it's just all around a better car from years past. So I read because I'm not really an expert at these side-by-sides and I want to take you guys on a journey of how we're going to make this thing into our side-by-side. -side. We're going to do some improvements that emphasize safety, ease of use, and comfort. So right off the bat what distinguishes this turbo from a lot of others are these beautiful Walker Evans reservoir shocks here. They are fully adjustable and obviously those springs are beautiful aren't they with the red accents now there's some tuning tricks and ways to set these up in a future video we'll adjust the ride height and uh, do some details um, but right now I think it's just gonna be just fine to learn how to drive this thing so these tires are 29 inch trail masters and they're 14 inch rims they're not really great at any one thing but as a learning tire for us and just something to kick around um, I think they're going to do great and you kind of notice that they're staggered in size the front rim and tire are narrower than the rear rim and tire and so it's just going to make it a challenge to upgrade to tires in the future because I don't want a wider rim staggered like that just in case I get a spare tire I want to be able to run it at both ends but for now they will do yeah this tail end is pretty mean looking I've already done my signature iron cross uh, lens treatment there I've had it on all of my motorcycles and builds since our my iron head chopper um, I might light it up with an LED one of these days uh, one of the things I also did this year was hide that ugly muffler with just a piece of plastic that's all it is a piece of plastic cargo area is pretty decent it's got a 300 pound capacity and there is all kinds of gadgets and things that you could mount in here including a perfectly fitted rigid toolbox and all kinds of accessories which we will explore in videos coming up and as you can see it has a tail light brake light and there are upgrade kits where you can get turn signals which we will do in a future video okay now looking at the passenger side here I just kind of want to show you where the turbo lives and it's tucked up under there it's kind of hard to see but uh, trust me it's there this pipe gets blazing hot and it's probably the reason that they have it uncovered here with lots of heat shield on the other side um, the rule of thumb here is that you never carry gas cans for obvious reasons on the back half of the car. Uh, I wouldn't even carry a gas can anywhere on this car for obvious reasons. It's dangerous. Little tidbit some of you guys may not know about, but the air intake for the clutch is right here. You can see right through it, I think. Get a better shot probably see my hand through it maybe not there we go 
and that brings air into the clutch system where the drive belt resides. And then on the other side, the passenger side, that is the air intake for the engine. And in a future video, we'll go into how to change that air filter and maintain it and keep it clean. It resides in a, another box behind this panel right here. And the fuel tank is accessible here on the passenger side. It's not a locking cap. I don't think we need a locking cap, but uh, it's a convenient place for it. And uh, you got to use 91 or better octane on this because of the turbo with the higher compression. Another thing about these turbos is they have a few of these rock guards here and there on the car, which is a really nice thing. Usually these are accessories in years past. I'm really happy to see that they've added some of these things as well as some factory skid plates underneath the car. Again, that's usually an aftermarket thing that you have to install, but this turbo has it on here. It's kind of a hard, kind of a plastic kind of material. I don't intend to do much rock crawling or bashing of the undercarriage, but it's just nice to know that it's there. Obviously, it's a four-wheel independent suspension here, four-wheel drive, and uh, here's a close-up of the disc brake caliper. Again, this breaks all four corners with uh, these drive shafts, and uh, it's a very, very stout system stock. But as any OEM, uh, definitely could uh, benefit from some upgrades, which uh, I'm hoping to do in the future, and I'll show you all how to do that. It's got a pretty menacing front end, I'd say. There's uh, a couple radiators back there and underneath this uh, red uh, cover here is access to uh, some power distribution blocks, the 5050 antifreeze coolant, and uh, some other gadgets I'll show you on a later video. Um, there's accessory lights you can get to replace these little shark fins or gills, and of course roll bars and all manner of uh, accessories you can get for these. Now the headlights are very capable by themselves. They're LED, they got high and low beam, and they're pretty bright on their own right. But in a video, we'll be showing you how to install a light bar across the top with the wiring and a toggle switch in the dash. Now, a lot of people have problems with this opening here on the razor door. Not really sure why Polaris does that because I have rarely seen people, at least in the online community, leave that open there. So we have a solution to that. Again, future video, we'll show you how to fix that. All right, as for rider comfort, it's not bad. You know, we've only spent maybe a total of a half hour driving up and down our alley so far with this. We have not had it off-road yet, um, but it's got a tilting steering wheel which is really nice for getting in and out full digital instrumentation um, and some automotive style shoulder belts um, we got a replacement for these which we'll show you here in a little while and uh, we're gonna upgrade those as well make it a little bit safer um, and we also have a roof that we're gonna be putting on this because as you can see not much protection for the fare of the uh, people need a little sunshade and we're going to fix that. We also got a windshield on order, a glass windshield, which will be really good. I've already installed this rear view mirror. That was the very first thing we did. It was pretty easy to install, as you can see. And uh, it's got blind spot mirrors, which is uh, really nice. Has a little grab handle for the passengers. Trust me guys, uh, that's a nice thing to uh, have. I went on a ride with uh, Clint up in Mammoth Lakes and uh, I was holding on to that thing for dear life. Plenty of room for upgrades with these uh, blank uh, button locations here um, for everything from uh, light bars, 
to lights, mostly lights. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, too many things besides wenches being installed in those, but uh, people seem to be putting uh, lots of light buttons in there. Um, there's only four right there. Um, I've seen people add more buttons down here to the console. Um, so we'll have to see about that. It's got a couple, uh, has a couple uh, drink holders, of course, cup holders. Um, you know, on the trail, I'm not really sure how well those things are going to hold a drink in there when you're bouncing around and not, whatnot. Oh, and I forgot, there's there's an actual extra one. So there's five blank uh, rocker switch uh, blanks. Got a little compartment right here. Pretty nice. There's also a deeper glove box over there and the uh, toolbox or tool bag resides in there, way back there. And then there's a little cubby up here with this little rubber thing, as well as right up here, which isn't bad. So all in all, um, it's got a little bit of storage here and there, which uh, is just fine. Uh, it's got a 12 volt power supply right there. Put uh, something to charge right there or use a uh, air pump. And just the driver's seat is adjustable. Now some of you, now some of you guys may ask, you know, uh, about cleaning this thing. Um, when I first heard about it, I had to double check, but uh, you basically just hose this whole thing off, interior included. Everything in here is made to uh, be dried out, and uh, it has these little plugs right here where the water just goes right on out. And uh, I've heard about a lot of people losing these. Um, from what I understand, these 2021 2021s are a little bit better, but uh, I think I'm going to put an O-ring in there, uh, try to make it a little bit tighter. All right, guys, I hope you liked that short little walk around of our new 2021 Polaris Razor XP1000 Turbo. And we have a lot of very interesting, fun to watch videos for you guys coming up in future episodes. Be sure to subscribe and hit your notification settings so you get notified when we upload a new one. That way you don't miss anything. Now, a lot of our installs and little tips and tricks, we're going to be learning from others. And then we're going to share our experience with you to let you know really how easy it is. These little tips and techniques can be applied to probably any other side-by-side -side with just minor part number differences. And heaven forbid, if we have a breakdown, you're going to be there with us and you're going to experience the trials and tribulations. So that's it, guys. We hope you enjoyed this first premiere episode for this new channel. And don't forget... Behind me is a whole grip of accessories, and we're going to show you how to install every single one in future episodes.